some people sleep through life, others dream through life, and there are also those who run through life. The latter either run away from something or they just run towards something in order to get as fast as possible to a certain destination. Eleven years ago, as the majority of my generation did, I ran away from Bulgaria in order to get as fast as possible to a better life in the West. And I was running kind of fast, getting degrees from several business schools, um, having good jobs and comfortable life in the main Western European capitals. But however, it seems that when you run too fast in life, you keep forgetting where you've been and where you are heading. One year ago, I realized that even if I liked what I was doing, I have completely forgotten what I would like to do. So I decided that it's, it's time to stop running on autopilot. Exactly nine months ago, on July 23rd, I left my comfortable life in Paris and started looking for directions in the east. I was looking for directions at the shamanic island in Russia, in the holy mountains of China, in the wilderness of the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. I was asking for directions Buddhist monks in Burma, gurus in India, myself, by doing silent meditation retreats in Nepal, and also other fellow travelers who, similar to me, were either run away from something or they were simply running towards adventures and challenges. However, the little did I know that the main challenge during my trip will not come from another unknown destination at the other end of the world, but from a country that I knew quite well, Bulgaria. After six months of traveling, unforeseen circumstances made me come back to my native country. In the beginning, I was kind of disappointed because I thought that I'm interrupting the journey of my life. But then I kind of believe that everything happens for a reason. And I was kind of secretly hoping that if I was not finding the answers I was looking for in the spiritual uh, East, then maybe the nostalgic memories from the past and the coziness of my home country could maybe give me the answers. So I ended up in February in Bulgaria. I simply accepted it as just another destination of my trip that I need to discover. And apparently, it was not quite difficult because Bulgaria was everything but a known place to me. During the past 11 years, I used to come back, but it was usually for a week or 10 days during which I was either running from one family reunion to a coffee meeting with a friend or another medical appointment. And in February this year, it was the first time that I had the opportunity to see that my hometown, Plovdiv, has transformed into a bohemian and hipster hub. That um, ski resorts such as Pamporovo and Bansko were equivalent to the one that I know from France. And last but not least, the shop assistant from the grocery store in front of my house was finally smiling and wishing me a nice day. Thanks to all these changes, I was not hit by the post-travel um, depression that most travelers are afraid of. The fact that you come back, you've changed, but everything else has remained the same. In my case, yes, I've changed, but apparently Bulgaria has been transformed completely. So, if I could escape the post-travel depression, what I could not escape, however, were the questions that follow after every trip. 
And believe me, I was trying quite hard. I thought that stories from my trip, such as missing the Trans-Mongolian train in Moscow, but managing to catch it up again in Novosibirsk, thanks to the time difference, such as living and trying to exist as a vegan in Mongolia, a country where even Buddhist monks eat meat, or walking one of the most dangerous paths in the world in the Mount Huashan in China, or building a school in Nepal with people from all over the world for the kids who lost everything during the 2015 earthquake, or simply trying to find working ATMs in India when I, where I ended in December last year during the demonetization reform, where the queues in front of the banks were equivalent to the one that we know in Bulgaria from 1996 uh, during the time of Jean Videnov. So all these and many more stories I could tell you even right now. And they were keeping my friends and family busy for a while. But I stayed in Bulgaria for a month. So sooner or later, somebody asks you the question, so now what? And believe me, it was not the first time that I was confronted with this question during my trip. But it was the first time that the question was coming from a person who really cared about the answer. And I knew that I was supposed to say, I will come back, probably back to France, return to my previous job, find a better one, uh, probably start thinking about the family, or start thinking about buying an apartment. Yes, I know Bulgarians, is for them, and for us actually, it's quite important this because we are a nation, 83% uh, of us owns a property, one of the highest in the European Union. I could also have said that I will simply write the next Eat, Pray, Love book. But that would have been simply another runaway from reality. And the reality was, I had no idea. I didn't know where I was going, and I had no idea what I wanted to do. And if it was challenging for me to admit that, apparently it was quite challenging for the people to accept that. Because I'm from a generation who didn't have to experience the war as my grandparents did. Didn't have to live through the austerity of communism as my parents. I didn't have to struggle with the visa regime of the European Union as my brother. My generation had the freedom to do whatever we want to do. But instead, we were ending up doing things that we were supposed to do, that often we were forgetting what we would like to do. And apparently, looking for an answer was considered either as a caprice or waste of time. My stay in Bulgaria did not, have, did not end up to be the alchemy story of Paolo Coelho. After a month, I hit the road again. I continued my journey. And funny enough, I just realized that exactly nine months ago, on July 23rd, I started this trip. <laughs> nine months are enough for a baby to be delivered, but instead of delivering a baby today, I'm delivering a speech in front of you, admitting that I do not know is also an answer. Admitting that when you run out of places where you can look for answer, the only option is to simply stop running. Because neither the comfort of the West, the spirituality of the East, or the coziness of my home country could give me answers and directions. And sometimes you simply have to stop running, give time to the time, embrace every single opportunity that is in front of you, such as delivering a speech in front of you guys today, being on the stage of TED, admitting that I do not know is an answer. Because, as J.R. Tolkien once said, not all those who wander are lost. Thank you.